Namaste and welcome to React Bits. Welcome to this series of Flutter with AppRite. So this is the first tutorial in the series where we learn to set up AppRite server. So we will learn how easy it is to get up and running for development. Only prerequisite that you need for AppRite to be set up is Docker. If you have not heard about Docker, it is a containerization system and it's also an open source software. So if you don't have Docker already set up in your system, please go and set up Docker and Docker Compose so that we can get on with the tutorial. Setting up Docker and Docker Compose will not be covered in this tutorial. It's fairly easy. You can find loads of tutorials in YouTube and Google. So please set up Docker and Docker Compose. So let's get back to AppRite. To get it started, simply go to AppRite.io and click get it started. So here is the getting started for web, create your first project. So this is not what we'll be doing. What we are here for is installation. So as you can see here, AppRite was designed to run well on both small and large deployment. The minimum requirements to run AppRite is as little as one CPU core and two gigabytes of RAM and operating system that supports Docker. Okay. Install Docker. The easiest way to start running your AppRite server is by running our Docker installer tool from your terminal before running the installation command. Make sure you have Docker CLI installed on your host machine. So Docker CLI must be installed. If you have not, please install the Docker CLI. Next, here they have provided a command. So if you are on Linux, use this command. If you are on Windows, use this command. If you are on Windows PowerShell, use this command. So uh, for Linux and Mac, this Unix will work. I am currently on Unix, so I'll be using this. You can click here to copy. Let's copy and let me open up a terminal. Okay. First thing I'd like to do is projects Flutter YouTube. So Create a new project for your AppRite projects. Let's write. If you wonder what this tech command is, this tech command is my sort function that will create a folder and CD inside that folder. So now I'll make two folders. First one is AppRite server. And next one is okay. Next, we do not need a folder. Let's cd into upright server. And in here, I will paste that command. Okay, and press enter. So I have already installed it. So uh, this should not take any time. Just I'll be taken to upright installation. So if you have not installed it, if you are doing this for the first time, it will take quite some time to download all the dependencies, download all the Docker images and etc. So starting up right installation. Once you are done with that, pause the video. Once you are done with that, then get back to this step. So we are on the development machine. So uh, up right installation, should be fairly easy. So choose your server host name default. Let's choose localhost. Choose your server port. So default is 80. This is good when we are deploying for localhost testing. Uh, for in my machine, I do not usually use 80. I like to use others. So let's use 4003. Next, HTTPS port. Let's leave it as it is because this is development server. We'll not be using HTTP as much. CNAME target, localhost, that's fine. So this will instantiate the Docker containers that is required to run upright in your 
machine this is taking some time done 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 so finally app write should be started let's wait okay okay fine so everything is done now that all the containers are instantiated we should go to this port url so localhost 4003 this is what we used so you can see that we get a sign in screen but we have not created any account yet so first let's sign up this use a simple password uh, so that it's easy to get along because we are in the local server let's sign up once you are signed up you'll get to the dashboard okay here we don't have any projects in order to set up our database our users etc we need to first create a project so let's create a project flutter app right i'll call it flutter app right great now we are inside flutter app right we can do a bunch of settings here tags api keys we can generate api keys we can check out settings so our project id this will be required later when we are setting up our flutter and this api endpoint will also be required when we are querying to our server from our flutter app okay so let's do a few things here first i like to add is a test user so go to users and down here there is a plus button click on that let's create a new test user test user let's use any email other than the one you signed up for the admin panel you can even use email that is not valid that's okay because uh, it will show as unverified but it will work so let's say we want to create test at testme.com password let's use again a very simple password so that it's easy for us in our flutter app to query and you can see here there are lots of features like OAuth providers you can use Google, GitLab, GitHub, Facebook, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Slack, Dropbox, all of these providers to authenticate your users. This is a lot. So I think this comes close to or even more than Firebase, right? Firebase authentication. Let's check out the stories. If we have any files we don't have, we can upload new files from here next the first thing we'd like to do is set up our database so to set up our database we need to think of what kind of app we are going to develop so for this tutorial series i'll be developing a quite simple app to keep record of your income and expenses so the database collection i'll create here will be transactions okay so we have transactions collection this is not like the collection in the fire store or firebase so this is because uh, this uses relational database so we need to define rules rules are columns in the database without rules this database will not work like firebase or fire store because fire store is a no sql database where you do not set up any columns any rules so let us add some fields in our database level user id that will that will store your users id and this will be a string yeah fine create next field so what we want is transaction type so let's let's make this numeric so that it's easy 
So transaction type will be either expense or income. Then amount. So amount should be numeric as well. Okay. So we have user ID, transaction type, amount, and next thing is I think we need date. Transaction debt that will be Transaction debt uh, Do we have date time? I don't think we have date time. So let's make it text Next What we need is Created at time stamp And next, updated at timestamp. Okay, I think this should suffice. User ID, transaction type. Oh, we need a description field, right? Title and description field. Title and description of transactions let's move these move the title up so let's move this at the top title of transaction then description I don't know why this is scrolling down, but that's okay. Okay, so we have title, description, user ID, all of text type, then transaction type that will be numeric, then amount, numeric, transaction date, created at, updated at. So all of these fields are set optional. So we need to set some of them as required. So title will be required. Okay, description not required, user ID will be required. Next, transaction type. Okay, so transaction type will also be required. Amount will also be required. Let's set transaction type default value as one so that first transaction type will always be selected even if it is not provided. Amount is required. Transaction date required. Created at required updated at required so update we have our basic database structure ready and let's set up permission so permissions in app right is fairly easy so you can provide permission to each user by user id team by team id or a user in a team with roles so we'll look at the permissions later for now we'll just use asterisk as all permissions so press asterisk and press space so that this kind of tag appears so this asterisk means everyone is allowed to read and write in this collection so update Okay, everyone, now we have the created our collection. We are ready to move on to our Flutter application to set up everything. So in our Flutter application, we will set up. First, I think we'll begin with authentication by sign up and login, and then we'll move on to maybe creating new transactions, updating, editing, deleting stuff. Thank you for watching this tutorial, please subscribe like and share this video so that i can keep making more of such videos